Hey, Bessie Brains, Kirby here, aka Darkwing Disc, and I gave up after Mambo's one through four. Can't believe it. Alongside me is Ollie DePina, and Ollie learned to read from a book that he wrote. Welcome to episode 26 of the KO Disc Golf Show. Episode 26, this is the Ride Shoe episode. Uh, famous uh, players to wear the number 26 is Shaquan Barkley, Adrian Peterson, and Wade Boggs. Red Sox players who wear number 26, uh, Brock Holt, Wade Boggs, and Lou Merloni, who was not necessarily like a great player, but is doing a lot of stuff in broadcast now after his career, and I've become a big fan of him, kind of post-career kind of guy. So, Ollie, who do you got from the Giants? Was that uh, number 26, Saquon Barkley, Saquad Barkley, um, burned our team this past year and went to the Eagles, so I got the, which you thought is a Barkley, we got the Singletary. <laughs> so Devin Singletary is our running back starting running back for the Giants and uh yeah he's doing work I'm excited I get to go see them next week in person on Sunday play the Seahawks nice. uh very very excited for that I'll be probably I think I'll be rocking the the cave on Thibodeau jersey so number five the white I think it'll, I think it'll, I think we'll be wearing white and so I think it'll be looking good with that so those are my Giants cool nice man how was your weekend it was good. Uh, celebrated Roxy's birthday. Uh, right. Didn't get to go do the Iron Man challenge, so we I went actually out to the Hood Canal and uh, kind of near Rain Shadow area for those familiar. Um, and it was just yeah, spent some time over there. We saw we drove and did a couple of hikes and saw two different waterfalls and really cool. Uh, one of the waterfalls I got to like climb up and see like through like halfway point and get like right next to it, which was pretty cool and. Uh, yeah, it was it was a cool time just hanging out there, and we stayed in this place that was like right on the water there, and so watching birds and just relaxing most of the days. It was really really nice, and uh, got to do some field work today. Coming back and uh, got my orientation for tomorrow. I'm um, starting over at a uh, Costco up in Shoreline. Very excited about that. So if you nice. go up there, come say hi. I'll be uh, smiling in the front end and saying what's up to a lot of people. So. You got to let me in so I can go get one of those inflatable hot tubs, bro. Inflatable hot tubs? I've been and, talking uh, about it, yeah. In a chicken bake. In a chicken bake, yeah, bro. And a double tongue chocolate cookie. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> bro, those guys, honestly, AJ is a little creepy. Like, Oh, they're so creepy. There's it's, like it's no weird. No yeah. thought no thought behind those eyes, that little nah. kid's eyes. I swear. Who There's... wants the chicken bake? His, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I still end up watching way too much of that shit, though, for sure. That's so funny. Yeah. They just they just got to do a walkout for FAU's football team. They ran out with the team, and they did an AJ night or something like that. I was like, what is going on with the world? Dude, they're so big right now. It's crazy. They were just at, like, an AEW, like, wrestling pay-per-view. They did, like, shit with, like, the wrestlers and stuff. They did, like, their, like, little, like, dance and that. And, like, it was... I was like, I can't believe this, man. Like, they're blowing up. And it's, like, little shit like that that goes so far. Like Crazy. So, well, how, you, how are you doing, Curb? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Honestly, just kind of same as usual, plugging along. Um, this season's starting to wrap up, which uh, is both uh, nice and, like, a little daunting at the same time. Um, just because once the season kind of wraps up and, like, the winter hits, like, my schedule goes from like super busy to like, like nothing at all for a couple of months. And it's more about just me, you know, kind of getting in the gym and like working out and kind of just practicing and, you know, trying to putt as much as possible, even in the cold weather kind of thing. So um looking forward to, you know, the, the season wrapping up I am, but at the same time it is like, ugh, you know, like it's, it gets pretty slow. So um, the mornings are getting colder and that, which I kind of like, I kind of like this time of year where like you can wear like a sweater and like, pants in the morning and by the afternoon you're like wanting to go down to like a t-shirt and pants and you're just kind of really comfortable the whole time like um yeah this kind of weather is like really great so but yeah all in all just like pretty good um we did the iron man 2 this past weekend and we'll get right into the review of that um yeah cold morning it was really cold and like after round one it like got colder um it was really really wild um, all in all, though, it was a really great day. Uh, shout out to David Pearson. Um, he got like a twenty-two hundred ish dollar ace. Um, that was huge. He hit hole four uh, at South Fork, so it was awesome. He just did like the original layout hole four. It's that short one with the triple mando. So good for him. Honestly, really, really great guy, and I'm uh, I'm really happy for him. Um, he's like an MA forty player, I think, or MA fifty. So 
um, yeah, just overall, just happy for him. And that's really cool. Um, it was a really smooth day. Uh, we finished at like a pretty reasonable time. All things considered, we did three rounds. Um, this is one of the, the, one of the better tournaments of the year. I think that we do just because the parking lot, like we tell people like, Hey, there's going to be a quick turnaround. You're just going to be like 45 minutes, you know, like don't go anywhere, like bring food with you. And if you do go somewhere, like get back really quick kind of thing. And, um, you know, the parking lot, just the whole day, there's people hanging out, like everyone's having a good time. Um, it's very, very social. Um, yeah, just, just one of the more fun tournaments that we do of the year kind of thing. So yeah, I was really bummed to miss out on it. Um, one, I really liked doing Iron Man one last year. Um, happy. Like I don't, I don't, the reason why I missed out, I'm super, I'm fine with it. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully just looking forward to Iron Man three with that. And I swear Always, it's the always the tournaments with like the really big ace pot. I remember I was doing the South Fork League and the ace pot was getting up really big. And there was one week I missed, and that one week I missed, it got hit. And I was like, it could have been me. And now I'm having the same feeling. I saw that ace. I was like looking out at my iPad and I was like trying to see who, if anyone ace going through all the divisions and every round. And I was like, oh. mm, yeah. congrats. That's super huge. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I'm going to go through the winners real quick. Kind of shout out to all of them. It was a long day at disc golf. I mean, it's, you know, three rounds of 18 um, is, is definitely like a full day for sure. So uh, shout out to Caleb Joyner, uh, new team ECD mate, teammate. So that's awesome. Uh, shout out to him for winning MPO. Uh, Houston Kratz won MA1. Houston Kratz, I'm sure everybody's familiar with him. He runs those yin yang tournaments. So um, congratulations to him as well. <clears throat> Uh, Dan O'Brien beat Tom Rower in a playoff, so that was really cool. Um, Aaron Sutton won FA40. Dan Schroeder won MA50. Um, Wally Mead won MA60. Cole Thomas won MA2. Atticus Ogenberger won MA3. I met him. I think I met him for the first time, and I may, may have met him in the past. He's a young kid. Um, I don't know exactly how old he is, but he doesn't look much older than like Jojo, uh, maybe a couple years older than like Dylan kind of thing. So he's got to be in that 14, 15 ish area. Um, he's, he seems really awesome. Uh, everybody like was raving about him and, um, you know, he came up and we had little trophies and I was like, like I gave him his trophy and I was like, Hey, let me take a picture. And he kind of just stands there for a second. And I was like, bro, you got a smile. And he got this like real big, like cheesy smile going. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, Hey man, if you're going to be winning so many tournaments, I was like, you got to get used to getting your picture taken with trophies. Like, you know, so he, he was really cool. Um, shout out to Jojo Nybar, uh, for getting third place there. He had kind of a rough round one and then he bounced back with a well, back to back, like really good in rounds two and three. Um, Jennifer Awesome Krasinski uh, won FA3, and I am nailing the pronunciation of her last name. Uh, her and her husband came up to me the other day and gave me a little high five about it. I was like, thanks, bro. Um, uh, Dylan Contentempo, Contentempo won MA4, and Andrea Leach won FA4. So uh, congratulations to all the winners. You know, Thank you again for joining us. Um, it was awesome. It was a really, really great day. Uh, the sun was out for part of the day, all in all, like it wasn't like rainy, it wasn't really too windy, just like chilly, which everybody, I think if you're out on the course playing, you probably weren't chilly because you're already heated just from getting out there and moving kind of thing. So yeah, all in all, really good time though. That's sweet. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so uh, also what happened out here uh, it was a B tier hosted by Dips Discs. Uh, we like Dips Discs a lot uh, down at ECD. Those guys have been really great to us. Eric Dupinski is just such a nice dude. Um, I've been to a couple of their tournaments up there in like Cedar Woolley and kind of like that and the uh, that kind of area up there. And uh, they're always like ran really well. So this was a B tier. This is called the Falling Barn Open. Um, looks like they had a bunch of different divisions. We're going to go through the winners real quick. I wasn't up there. I didn't, I don't really know too much about what was going on. Um, shout out to the winner, Colin Bryant. Looks like he beat out Carter Aarons and Cameron Messerschmidt by a few strokes. Um, uh, MP40 was won by Chance Stad, um, who I think I know Chance. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've played with him a few times. He's a really nice guy. Uh, FP40 was won by Christy Lee. She beat out uh, Christine Hustis. Uh, MP50, no surprise, Ming Bang. Uh, he, like, like I said, that guy just wins every year. I think he's won every tournament he's played this year. I think he came into the shop and told me that the other day. And I was 
That's gross. Mind like, blown. That's yeah, so crazy. Like next level. I don't care what division you're playing. Like, like not slip up at all is insane. Um, MP60 was won by Ted Moens. MA1 was Tristan Keller. Uh, FA1 was Hannah Keller. Uh, MA40 was Adam Hill. Uh, FA40 was one of my good friends, Kayla Oridi. I uh, love Kayla. She's awesome. And shout out to Shayna Schuerman for being out there too. I love Shayna as well. Both of those ladies are amazing. Uh, MA50 was won by Eddie Wren Jr. Uh, MA60. Ooh, dude. We had an MA60 goat battle. Um, Chuck Nudson, my boy, took down uh, Paul Paul Coff's your guy, right? Uh, Michael Go. Michael Go. Dang. All right. Michael Go wasn't there. But my boy that's, Chuck Nudson took down. Hey, that's my guy too. Yeah. The bo- hey, box squad is oh, yeah. home. Fox squad member he texted me after round one and was like hey dude like can i pick your brain for a second and i'm like what's good bro and he's like i have a really big lead going into the second round he goes should i keep going aggressive or should i just like play like conservative and i was like you should keep throwing the shots that you're throwing i was like they're obviously working and keep doing your thing if he didn't shoot nearly as well the second round but he shot just well enough to pull out the win so that's my boy nice job chuck i know he listens to these so he's gonna be pumped let's go um, shout out to Andrew Tischler, Tischler uh, for winning MA2. Um, FA2 was won by Sammy the Tutu Mayas. Uh, MA3 was won by Jonathan Roth- Lothrop. Um, man, I'm not great with these. Uh, FA3 was won by Tyrannosaurus Bex. Let's go. And then MA4 was won by Adam Glenn. So congratulations to all of them. Way to pick up a B-tier win. You know, way to go, guys. That's uh, That's awesome. Um, yeah definitely so uh ollie bro this is our six month like this is now 26 out of 52 year or 52 weeks in the year this is the halfway point in the year for us man that's awesome yeah um, super sweet. yeah I'm, I'm uh i'm really happy to be doing this with you um it's been a lot of fun this definitely doesn't feel like something that you know, is ever like, oh man, we got to do the show tonight. Or, you know, like every time I send that text to you in the, like in, on Monday where I'm like, yo bro, you want to do it tonight or tomorrow morning? You know, it's never with like a, like a burden kind of thing. And, and your response is always like, yo, we got it tonight. Let's do this kind of thing. Like it's, it's just been fun to do. And, um, honestly, like I, I don't, I love, I would love to get more views and that kind of thing, but I don't necessarily care about that because I'm just having fun doing it right now. So. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think we're gonna. There's gonna be like this is gonna be super cool to look back like for like, however like I feel like we'll be coming maybe like the first season. You know, the first year will be the first mm-hmm. season of the KO. Come back maybe have like a spot where we do them at or like you know have like new mics and new things. You know, so we're ever getting better with that. And it's fun to look back at those ones. Fun to do these ones. It's and like you said, it's something I am excited to do every week. It's a uh, I get excited to tell people that I get to do it and like tell the story, like tell people how it got started and different things like that, where it's definitely something I enjoy doing and 26 weeks of doing it. doesn't really feel like we've been doing it for 26 weeks, but it's just so cool. Yeah. It's been great. Honestly, it just kind of feels like you and I are just kind of like, like we just kind of like meet up to like chat, like once a week kind of thing. And I just kind of give us like a list of stuff to talk about ahead of time. So yeah, it's been really great. Um, and again, we appreciate everybody that does tune in and kind of hang out with us and watches. Um, so I have a couple of discs that we're going to give away um, just as like a thank you to everybody. Um, first is going to be this really sweet Team, team Dismania stamped. Uh, this is a function. This is a really understable eight speed. I like using these as rollers. I know some players who don't uh, throw as hard. They like to use this as like hyzer flips or like long kind of like turnover discs. So... Um, if you want to win this disc, what I want you to do is comment on this video and I want you to comment, uh, can you believe it? So um, comment, can you believe it down below to win this disc? And uh, I'll kind of explain what that means or, you know, why I want you to comment that a little bit later in a segment. Uh, but yeah, so to win this one, I want you to comment, can you believe it? And then uh, to win this P3X, which is the new like beaded putter from Dismania. This is the Flex 2 plastic. Uh, these are really sweet. I put it with the other one that they sent me a little bit in the shop. It's really, really straight, really neutral. The bead's really not too big on there, which is really cool as well. So um, if you want to win the, the P1X, um, why don't you comment 
Um, what do you think, Ollie? Maybe like your favorite color or something? What you got any ideas, bud? What is the? I just put a disc back into my bag. What is that disc I just put back in my bag, and it's staying in the bag? Maybe something like that. Okay, funniest answer wins. What is the disc that Ollie just put back in his bag? Silliest answer wins. That's actually good. Way better than that. Yeah, yeah. So silliest answer or silliest disc that Ollie put back in his bag. If it's silly enough and we have it, we'll make Ollie actually put it back in his bag for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, watch what, me. Like, watch me. Hey, that disc will be. You'll see that disc fly in ways you never knew it could fly. Yeah, yeah. This is a guy who's already bagging like a tilt. I think he bags like two or three tilts. So like, if you want to go silly, you got to go very silly. Yeah. <laughs> We, we uh, cut back down from two tilts. So now we're at one. We're one up. in a splice. We're one yeah. in a splice. So okay. we're working. One and a half. Yeah. One and three quarter tilt. So not bad. Yeah. Um, that's funny. So yeah. So again, to win, just to recap, to win the function, I want you to comment, can you believe it? And to win the P1X, I want you to comment the silliest disc to put in Ollie's bag. So there we go. Um, and then we'll make the announcement next week. I'll kind of just pick some random winners or random comments off of there. And we'll, maybe we'll throw them into like a random randomizer or something. So, um, all right, moving on. Um, coming up this weekend is the B tier, the Terran Open. Um, this is one of my favorite events of the year, actually. I absolutely love Lake Fenwick. Um, that's a place I've been going since I first moved to Washington. Um, and it's been, it's just improved so much, especially over the last couple of years, Terry and Ron, especially like big shout out to those guys. They do a great job with maintaining that place and cleaning it up and adding all the features that you see there. Um, like I remember back in the day, the, that little path or that little hill between hole, uh, three and hole two, there was never like a wooden railing on there or anything like that. So when your disc rolled down, you're like, that's definitely out of bounds. And I don't know where as out of bounds exactly. You know, just adding like a little railing to that has been so nice. They've added staircases in places that didn't have staircases before. The course is generally just a lot cleaner, uh, not as much debris and stuff like that that was around before. So um, that and all the new tee pads, there's now officially like a full 18 of longs and a full 18 of shorts. Uh, the only tee pad that is both is hole four because there's not enough space to kind of make one over there going up that hill. But I absolutely love Lake Fenwick. I really believe that if Lake Fenwick had the ability to have like one or two more like wide open holes, I think Lake Fenwick could be like one of the best courses in the area. Um, it definitely has its flaws. You know, some of the holes are like a little on top of themselves and they're a little too like intermingling kind of thing. But for the most part, like I, I, I just, I love it down there. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to this weekend should be a good event all in all. Yeah. I love Lake Fenwick. Be, uh, awesome awesome course i've done some uh i've done one event there which was like uh it was like the super owl and it was like where you throw one shot two shots off the whole one tee pad and you didn't have to pick which one would like you could say and you were basically shooting to hole one's basket and holes two's basket so it was pretty fun and so i i like that course you can get kind of creative at that course and uh yeah i enjoy it yeah um yeah, really looking forward to this weekend, like I said. Um, ran by uh, Tyler Schrock and sponsored by Mando, so thank you to all of them. Really appreciate it. It's going to be awesome. Um, Ming's playing MP40, so we can almost count on another Ming victory this year, which will be crazy. Which, you know, again, just insane. So, um, yeah, we're playing one round of the long pads and one round of the short pads. So, cool mix-up. They're not moving the baskets at all, which is also... Um, I like that, you know, because when it's for like a practice round, you know, like I can just like jump T-pad to T-pad and then move on with the whole kind of thing, which is nice. So, um, all right, moving on to our next topic. Um, this is something that I kind of just decided to add in here. I'm wearing my Red Sox jersey this week. Baseball season ended yesterday. I guess technically today there was a really wild... Um, really wild uh, two game double header between the Mets and the Braves and they split the series, which means that both of them went to the playoffs instead of the Diamondbacks. It's a really interesting situation where if the Braves won both games, the Mets weren't going to the playoffs and the Diamondbacks were and vice versa kind of thing. But because they split the series, the Diamondbacks um, just kind of got left out of it. But with that, the Red Sox missed the postseason again. And, um, 
I kind of just wrote like a couple of paragraphs or like a couple of like a little bit about kind of like my feelings about this year, this season. You know, you and I started this this podcast by kind of going through like an MLB check in. And after a while, we're like, hey, like our episodes are growing so long. We got to cut a couple of things out. And that was like the thing that we decided to cut out. Um, so this is kind of my little like love letter to the Red Sox of the 20 and the 2024 season with the Red Sox. Um, I'm just going to kind of read what I have here. 2024, a season that went out as expected as it could have. I think if you talk with a lot of Red Sox fan to start the year, 500 was an expectation. For a team that was 528 times throughout the season, it still feels like a disappointment. This is the Boston Red Sox. We are supposed to be better than 500. We're supposed to be a top five franchise in all of baseball. We're not supposed to miss this postseason this many years in a row. Shame. Shame on them for letting us believe at the All-Star break just to come out and completely collapse. You gave us just enough hope to start to dream and just as quickly bring us back down. As I look forward to 2025, I hope for optimism for the future of this team. We have a solid core of starting pitchers, Hauk, Bayo, Giolito, Crawford, with uh, minor leaguers. We have this one guy. His name is legitimately Dick Fitz. It's hilarious. I'm so pumped that he's in the system. Um, and we have a couple other young Red Sox coming through this through the system. Um, a bunch of like young guys. Uh, Roman Anthony is the number one minor leaguer in baseball. We have a catcher coming through, Kyle Teal, uh, Cooper Criswell, uh, Marcelo Meyer. So we have a bunch of guys. I plead with the Red Sox to make the necessary moves to bring us back into contention. Trading with Seattle for a George Kirby would be a dream. Signing uh, Shane Bieber would be a step in the right direction. Both of them would be showing that we are serious about creating a winning club. Juan Soto should not be off the table just because he's a left-handed hitter and we're stacked with lefties already, and we have more coming through the minors. We are the Boston Red Sox. We should be able to spend. The Red Sox have four prospects they want to keep, and I wouldn't be against trading any of them, including uh, Tristan Casas. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to be a free agent after next season. Raphael Devers and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. give the same vibes that Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz gave in 2004. It's that left-right powerhouse hitters. Big thank, and uh, on top of that, I want to kind of just add in this. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to the thousands of hours of listening to Joe Casiglione. <clears throat> he retired after calling the Red Sox for 42 years, uh, ending this past Sunday. Uh, he's the voice of four championships in my lifetime. When I think of the Red Sox, I think of them in his voice. Just like baseball, he seemed eternal. I will always love listening to Red Sox game because his presence in the booth will be missed dearly. So for one last time, can you believe it? For the third year in a row now, I will watch the postseason, not rooting for any particular team, but rooting against just two of them. Fuck the Yankees and fuck the Astros. All right. I'll you, uh, our fan football real quick. I love that. That was amazing. I re- as a as a fan of sports, like I did, it just you could see passion in another sport. Like I, I that was cool. I enjoyed hearing that and listening to that. Thanks, man. All right. On to the KO Disc Golf Show Fantasy Football Week 4 Update. Oh, I got clapped again, and it was bad. 92 to 166. It's just, I'm putting out, I'm putting out, un. it's just bad, bad. It's just bad. Me and Kirby made a trade. Uh, I sent him Trace McBride, and he sent me Drake London. I did not really need a wide receiver. I did. I just. I felt like maybe I can. I. I might be able to move some more pieces around. Is my. Yep. Is my total thought. Yep. So. And I needed a tight end, which. I. I don't know. My tight end still this week was like such a disappointment. Um. I think he actually got me zero points, which I was like, son of a bitch. Trace McBride. Oh, no, I didn't use Trace McBride. Yeah. He's still out. Because he was out. Yeah. yeah. So I think I probably got another week or two of him. My plan behind our trade is that probably by like, because I'm still scoring like a decent amount of points every week. So maybe by the second half of the season, if he comes back and kind of gives me another little boost, I'll be kind of geared up well for the postseason. So I'm hoping for that. That's that's the plan there. Okay. So all the games are done. So Team CL5423 came out with the win over me with that big, 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 like over 70 point win. And then Team Lucas Cobrea is off the losing train. Nice. He gets his first win, moves to one and three. 137.88 to 96.84. Oh, dang. So I was close to... We had three teams in the 90s. This is pretty bad. <laughs> Damn, bro. Um, 
to t uh he lost to two tight ends one cup and then we got team oh no oh no i'm the only undefeated uh only team without a win now damn you only win this luke just won against toby so luke the uh, he just beat toby but if you look at luke's team luke he texted me he said is there any reason why a quarterback would get forcibly removed off of my starting lineup before the game and i said i don't i don't know maybe something didn't save i'm not sure and i go to check he did not play a quarterback luke and he's won without playing a quarterback he won by nine points without playing a quarterback that's that good. is insane Yo, that's oh hard. my god i'm on top of the world scored a whopping 198.18 versus you with your 100 so you you keep putting up these big big point scores for nothing no, nah, but th so that's the thing though. Is like I'm scoring, so it's like, what do I do? Like I can't be upset just because I'm not scoring the hottest of the week, but I'm consistently. So if we did like an overall points thing at the end of the year, I bet you I'm going to be in the top three, top four. You know, I'm just getting unlucky, and that's all right. I mean, I'm still it's still a quality team. I'm okay with that. Well, I guess I, I don't know what I'm celebrating. I'm zero and four. Yeah, I was like, bro, okay, fun. <laughs> well, okay, just wait. I'm zero and four now. We have. 10 weeks till the playoffs, I'm going to be 10 and 4. I'm I'm winning out. I would like to see that. That would be pretty electric. That'd be electric factory. Every week it just builds a little more. That'd be awesome. Who am I playing this week? Okay, well, let me go. Let me finish up. Team Game Zandsburg came up. He is back to 500 with a 107.78 nice. victory to Team Slop Jockeys 98.98. He scored so he won with 107. Screw him. <laughs> like that, that pisses me off. <laughs> hey, so you guys are both five hundred. That's crazy. This is actually hilarious. You guys are both five hundred, and you've scored as a total roughly. Uh, this is quick maths, like five hundred and ninety-ish points. Mm -hmm. Five ninety, and Gabe has scored three ninety. Yeah. So you have 200 more points scored, but you have the same record as Gabe. That's so dumb. Hey, I got... It's just bad luck, but, I like, you know, I can't be upset about that, right? Like, Yeah, so one of the big uh, stats is points against. So you have probably the highest points against, which is going to be... Makes, show. Makes sense. Oh, yep. no, Team Slop Jockeys has just a little more. Maybe it'll update after this week, but mm -hmm. basically I'm playing Luke next week, so... Now I'm going up against a guy who just won without a quarterback. We'll see what he can do with the quarterback. Uh, I, I, I'm i hoping maybe the same something... Like, he texted me. He was watching and being really, like, on it. He was like, I really... Like, he would have scored... The quarterback he wanted to play, he signed that week, and he would have scored 30 more points on it. So he was looking at, like, a 160-point game. But that's just crazy. Um, me versus Luke next week. We got you versus Lucas Cobrea. Which is going to be a fun little matchup. Yeah. You're pr and then we got Gabe Zansberg versus two tight ends, one cup. And then we got I'm on top of the world versus Team Slop Jockeys. And then Team CL versus OK Fantasy Football. So basically, the only teams that need to catch a win are me. I'm coming for it. We'll just see how the, how this looks in a couple weeks, and I check back at 500. That would be the goal. But we're we're trying. We're trying. I can't believe he did. He had Baker Mayfield score huge on the bench. Yeah, no, that's who he wanted to play, so he oh would have had god. even more. Yo, he would have smoked him. Oh my god. I, I'm happy for Luke, because I, I genuinely think there was either something like didn't save or something didn't happen, because he was really on top of it. He's been really on top of it this year, and he's been really trying, which for someone that doesn't watch football or doesn't play fantasy, really cool to see. It's just like fun to play with. Um, in my other leagues, I promise I'm doing better. I'm 4-0 in my other league. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. All right. And that's that's hilarious, dude. Oh my god. Um okay, moving into the uh the drafter this week. This was one that uh this is one I'm pretty excited about. I think Ollie and I are gonna have a good time with it. But uh this is the M draft. We're drafting M words, M things. Um Ollie, I think you've had the first pick the last like few weeks, so I'm gonna take the first pick this week. Yeah, I was gonna say you got that. Um and uh for the first overall pick with the M draft, I'm gonna take. I man, I like my list. I don't. 
I don't have one like de facto number one. I just have a bunch of like good ones. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with like meat. Uh, just like steak, chicken, just a wild like... one of one. Yeah. <laughs> My list is built for the long haul. I I thought I I wanted to say meat, but just selecting meat in my draft is I'm not gonna go there. Uh, I'm not getting clipped. Where oh, I will no be problem. I will I will be clipping that. I got I got I got picks today. It's gonna be good. So that's a okay meat. I I can I can respect the pick. I love meat as well. Yeah, I, I love, love you know hibachi grill. You know you go to like hibachi. You know you go to like uh, Korean barbecue. You know, steakhouses, barbecue joints, bro. I'm I'm a big fan. Yeah. All right. So with my first pick and the number two overall pick of this M draft, the KO Disc Golf Show M draft, a classical. We're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna mix up some picks. So we're gonna go kind of like a personal, and then maybe a, like a, just a good M word. So we're gonna go with movies. Good one. Go out to the movies, you know, just watch movies at home, go to yeah. airplane movies, whatever you want. Wherever you want to watch them, they're goaded. And then, with the third pick and my second pick, we're going to go with Michael Jordan. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I know it's a name and there's the Jordan in it, but it's Michael. You know, it's Mike. No. I was I was going to do a MJ and just do like Mike, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson. Yeah. But then I was even going to try to throw in Mike and be like, Mike Tyson, Mike. But then I was like, I can't take everything. Yeah. Yeah. Had you tried to use that one for like the J, been like Michael Jordan. I've been like, not cool, bro. You know, but because it's M, I mean, yeah, that totally works. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good pace, man, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, movies is a good one. I don't go to the movies too often. My wife and I watch like a couple of movies at the house once in a while. But movies is a good pick, yeah. Uh, all right. For the number four pick. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm go with magic, um, bro. When you're a kid and you believe magic's real, that's awesome. You watch a magician go like it's a pretty sick thing when you see a trick and you're like, how the frick did he do that? Like, how did he put that card inside of that lemon? And that was the card I wrote my name on. Like, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, um, yeah so magic. So it come magic comes to mind as like Harry Potter kind of yep. like that kind of mag, you know, just like magic. Yeah, shit, yeah, like that. Yeah, all of it for sure. And then um, I'm also going to pick uh, – I'm going to pick manga. Uh, Ooh. I don't read a ton of manga, but I definitely tune into like a lot of anime and stuff. I'm a big fan. Um, there's a couple of mangas that I am a big fan of. Actually, like the original Pokemon manga is like so good. It's insane. Um, but yeah, so – uh, yeah, manga is going to be for the number five pick in this draft. All right, with the number six pick and my third pick. Ooh, I'm excited because I'm gonna have some good. This is like the one I, I have some one. I have to like pick which one I want to leave off the list. Right, I have some good ones, but we're gonna go with the Mariners. On my list. Yep. We love the Mariners. They break our hearts. My they break a lot of hearts every year. Give us give a lot of hope and. A whole lot of nothing in results. Um, yeah. That yeah, I it, I was so excited, really like was getting into it, and then just like watching such a good pitching rotation, just like do nothing with like zero scoring, and everything happened a little too late. Like it seems like always every year, and yeah, it's just the same old story. It kind of seems like I feel like things are changing, but it's so slow. Yeah. But that is my. Uh, the sixth pick and my third pick, and with my last pick, ooh, I think I, I gotta go with money. I gotta get that money. Okay. I think there are some other ones I'd rather put in there. I'll tell, I'll say it afterwards. But I think I'm gonna go with money. I'll Money's take the money. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's not bad. Um, I'm going with Mills. Oh. Lost you for one second. Milf. Yeah. Milfs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Man, I love frogs. Man, I love frogs. Yeah. Milfs. 
That's a that's a good one. That's a solid yeah. solid solid answer. Yo, what, I knew, and I was like, that was the one before the show. Ollie and I were talking about what we were picking, and I was I like, could, that might be it. Yeah, I got a good. pick that I feel really good about, and I'm pretty confident you're not going to take. And I was right about that. So, um, yeah. So honestly, the the other ones that I had, mangoes, love some mangoes, uh, maple syrup, big fan as well, and Marvel, and then oh. Mamba was the other one that I had. I had messy. Uh, yeah, and then I had uh, McDonald's as well. Mm, neither of those are really like great. I don't Mc- know. Hey, you had a B- McDonald's one dollar menu got me through so much. You don't understand. You, the, you had to be there. The dollar menu there. Go go yeah. ask go ask uh, Chad Ochocinco about McDonald's. Come on, if Michael Jordan and Larry Bird can have McDonald's, why can't I? Come on. Of course you can have McDonald's, but I don't know if that's like. <laughs> I don't know. I did pick like McDonald's apple pie at one point. Like, yeah, like, come I, on. Like, now we're now we're hate. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's but when it's my pick, I mean, it's just not great. It's fine, you know. It's all no right. maple syrup or milf, but like it's all right. Hey, that's why I didn't draft it. <laughs> that's why it's at home. That's right. That's right. Um, all right. Uh, this is a great episode, uh, Ollie. Once again, man, awesome to be doing this for twenty six weeks with you. It's been super great and. Uh, you know, looking forward to 26 more, bro. Let's keep it going, oh, yeah. right? Dude, so excited. This has been so cool. Like I say, it's just such a fun outlet to have. And at the end of the day, it's just us just talking about the things that go along around here. And it's super cool. Yeah. Yep. Stuff that we're interested in, which is cool. And if there's stuff that you want us to talk about or stuff that you're like, guys, stop talking about this, like, let us know, you know, yeah. so open to like anything that, um, you know, the people that are watching want us to be talking about or want us to do. So, or if there's tournaments that we're missing, like, let us know and that kind of thing. So, yeah, definitely we'll run it back on a tournament or anything like that. And love to just talk about more people in the scene and doing stuff here. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to take over the quote for this week. Uh, this is from uh, Great Fields of the Mind by A. Bartlett Giamatti. Um, this is a uh, sign-off that Joe Casiglione uses at the end of every season, and I thought it would be really appropriate that yesterday was his last game and also um, the last day of the Red Sox. Uh, <clears throat> it breaks your heart. It is designed to break your heart. The game begins in the spring when everything else begins again, and it blossoms in the summer, filling the afternoons and evenings, and then as soon as the chill rain comes, it stops and leaves you to face the fall alone. You count on it, rely on it, to buffer the passage of time, to keep the memory of sunshine and high skies alive, and then just when the days are all twilight, when you need it most, it stops. That was episode 26 of the KO Disc Golf Show. Ollie, what's the line? Shoot low, and we'll see you next week for episode 27. See ya.